Hello everybody, welcome to episode 27 of the Pins and Needles podcast. My name is Zoe, you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Pins and Needles UK. We do also have a Ravelry group called the Pins and Needles podcast group, so you can come and join us in there. And if you needed to get in touch, either send me um, a direct message on Instagram or email me at highpinsandneedles at gmail.com. Big welcome back to all my regular viewers and an extra special welcome to anyone that's new. Um, I've had quite a few more subscribers recently. So as I said, I'm Zoe. I live in South Wales in the UK, right on the coast. And I live with my husband, Dave, Jim the dog, and my three kids. Um, It's been a bit of a a week, (laughs) two weeks really. Um, the children have been on their half-term holiday, so they had a week off school and um, Dave and I had to continue working while they were on a break, so it's been particularly frantic. Um, and also, for those of you that watch the news, it's not been a brilliant time in the UK. We've suffered some very tragic um, terrorist attacks, so it's been a funny old couple of weeks and everyone's feeling a bit discombobulated. Um, and then... I'm recording this on Friday the 10th of June and yesterday we all voted in our general election. All the results came out today and um, it's a bit of a mess, I'm exhausted and yeah things have been feeling a little bit weird um, and I've been kind of taking refuge in my knitting and sewing a bit this week. It's been a source of great comfort. So I've got quite a few things to show you today. Hopefully you'll enjoy the episode. Um, I Oh, the one thing I did want to say about the general election, um, if you're not in the UK, it's probably not terribly interesting, but wherever you are, if you're on Instagram, I thoroughly recommend that you search hashtag dogs at polling stations because it's just, it's just fabulous. <laughs> Just hundreds and thousands of photographs of people's dogs waiting outside polling stations doing their bit for democracy. So um, that cheered me up no end, having something fun to look at. I also wanted to thank everybody for your really kind and generous comments on my Beach Hut socks. Um, I showed you last week my new design. I'll wave it around again this time for anyone that's new. So this is my first ever design and my first ever sock design and um, it's inspired by Barry Island where I live and these are the beach huts that we have on the front. Now the pattern has been tech edited and I've just got the most kind and generous group of test knitters busily knitting away for me on these so I'm thoroughly enjoying seeing people's different colour choices and interpretations of my pattern. So, um, as I mentioned last time, I hope to be able to release this pattern to you guys in July. Um, And at the moment, it looks like I'm on track for that. Um, So yeah, keep your eye out for those. Um, And the other last little bit of administration before we get into the meat of things. Oh, that's better. Um, I have been running a joint knit along, along with Jenny from Owl About Yarn, and Ellie from Tuthin Bryn. And that came to an end on the 31st of May. Um, and it was called the hashtag three amigas knit along because we are the three amigas, we are thick as thieves. Um, and we had, I think it was 30, 35 entries. The chat thread was hosted in my group, Pins and Needles. The finished objects were over in Jenny's group, the Owl About Yarn group. And we'll get some pictures up in Ellie's group, Tuthinbrin, of the winner's prizes and the winning finished objects. So I jumped on random number generator this morning before the podcast and picked our three winners. So our first winner is post number 34, and that was Maria, Maria Samira. Um, she Her finished object was a lovely market bag, and she wins... The prize from Ellie of Tuthin Bryn and if you go and have a look in her Etsy shop Maria you can choose any pattern and any skein of yarn that you like. So do have a look and I will get Ellie to get in touch with you about sorting out a prize. 
uh, the second prize goes to post number 12, which is Wei Lin. Hi, Wei Lin. I met Wei Lin last autumn or maybe the autumn before when Jenny, Ellie and I went on the Great London Yarn Crawl and she was one of our guides that was taking us round and then we found each other on Instagram. So congratulations, Wei Lin. Um, you have won any skein of yarn that you like from Jenny's shop on Etsy. So head over to the Etsy website, find the Owl About Yarn shop and decide what you'd like. And again, I will get Jenny to get in touch with you to sort out getting the prize delivered. Oh, and Wei Lin's finished object was some gorgeous stripy socks. I think it was Twisted Limon yarn um, and there's a contrast heel. I think that was in Stranded Dye Works. They were gorgeous, really springy colours. And then the winner of the final prize donated by me was post number 15, which was Jeanette Jintz 65. Congratulations, Jeanette. Um, Jeanette knitted some beautiful, bright, cheerful pink socks. Um, so I've got the prize here to wave at you. So Jeanette, you have won this lovely skein of Arucania yarn. It's kind of tonal purples with bits of black in. This is Botany Lace, which is 100% extra fine merino, 450 yards or 410 meters. Um, it doesn't have a colorway name, I don't think. No. Anyway, so congratulations, Jeanette. Um, I will send you a message or you send me a message and I will grab your address. Um, and then if you remember, I went to the handmade fair with my mum and my daughter. And I found this brilliant stand, which of course I can't remember the name of now, but I also picked up for Jeanette, my winner. Look, Craft Bean Medal. <laughs> I couldn't resist it. It's got, um, it's a pin badge. It's got a little sort of safety pin doohickey on the back. And you know what? Grown-ups don't get enough medals or stickers or prizes. So you won a little shooting star badge, Jeanette, to go with your skein of yarn. So congratulations. I'll put these to one side and as soon as I have your address, I'll get those out in the post to you. Um... I think that's it for the introduction. I'm going to move seamlessly onto my pin section whilst reminding you that if you want to check timestamps, check the box down below. I'll put up the time sections for each of the different parts of the podcast and all the details of everything that I mentioned will be down there if you want to have a look. Now, I was chatting to Jenny yesterday And I was a little bit worried that I wasn't going to have very much to talk to you about today. I have been super busy with the kids being on holiday and all sorts of things. And I haven't really got through as much sewing as I would have liked. And Jenny said, oh, well, don't worry. You know, you've got the knit along prizes to announce. I'm sure you'll be fine. Just don't worry about it. And I thought, well, I could make an effort to do the next bit of sewing on the kimono that I'm sewing. And um, it was all going along wonderfully well. Oh, you can just see Jim the dog down there. <laughs> Jim? Hey, Jim. Um, I got distracted by the dog. Fortunately for you, I've made a catastrophic error that I can't quite identify, so I now, <laughs> I now have plenty to talk about with my kimono. Oh, I'm a bit disappointed actually. It was going so well. Let me start by showing you the pattern. So it's Simplicity 1318 and I was trying to make view D, which is this one down the bottom. Um, I think I mentioned this last time. It says on the front of the packet, easy to sew. And I distinctly remember saying, so when I make a pig's ear of this, you can all tell me, well, it was supposed to be easy. And what did I do? I made a pig's ear of it. I should go into fortune telling. For a start, I've draped it on here, but obviously I haven't finished it. Um, I've pinned, I haven't finished attaching the facings. I still got to do 
Well, these are the front bands, so I've got to attach these. There's then facings that go on the inside and hemming the cuffs and um, finishing, off, finishing it off. So there's a few more bits, but the main bulk of the construction is done. Um, so that's why it's sitting a bit, a bit odd. It's still pinned all the way around. So I've sort of turned it in so you can get an idea of what it's supposed to look like. Um, I've used a crinkle crepe Georgette, I think, which I bought from www.sewisfaction.co.uk. That's shown as new fabric website, which is wonderful. Um, and the way this is constructed, you have two back and sleeve pieces, two front and sleeve pieces. It's an all-in-one piece like this. And then you have four separate pieces that form this facing band. Um, so I did bring my instructions because the, um, the diagrams I thought might be quite useful. Yeah, so there you can see how it's constructed. So you've got two back pieces and then a front and, and sleeve piece, one obviously on either side. So I attached the two back and sleeve pieces together and I attached the two front and sleeve pieces together. They went absolutely perfectly well together. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but I did French seams. I just thought it would be nice and tidy and a nice professional looking finish and I didn't really want to wrestle with my overlocker. So these side seams here and the side seams that run down the shoulders and the sleeve they're all French seams. That went absolutely fine. Um, and then the next stage is you join the facing pieces together. You interface them and can you see, so you've got a back neck band, you've got a front facing and you've got a back, lower back facing as well. So I always trace my pieces off. So this is the front. You have two of these, one for each side, obviously. That's the front facing. There's the other one. And you also have a back facing. This you cut out on the fold. So you, this is doubled and it goes you know, across the, the bottom of your back. Um, and then you also have this piece, which is the piece that goes just there at the back of your neck. And this bit does not fit. You cut all of these pieces out separately, and then you basically you join them at the seams here. So you'd have two front pieces, one down here, and then you join them at the bottom. They all went together absolutely fine, no problems. And then you actually attach that, you end up with a great big long loop of facing and then you attach it to the rest of the kimono and you have to match the shoulder seams and the side seams and some notches. So I went merrily on my way pinning this thing to the kimono and it doesn't fit. And I can't work out why. All of the pieces except for this back facing fit beautifully. So these long sections here, the seam matches at the shoulder and it matches at the side, on both sides. And then the long piece that goes at the back also matches beautifully side seam to side seam. This piece does not fit between the shoulder seams. And I don't know why. This is a multi-sized pattern, so I double checked. I'm making the medium size, so I checked, yes, this is the medium size piece and I found my tracing and I put it back and if I have a look at that, I have definitely cut out the medium, it's the right size, but it doesn't fit. It will not meet the shoulder seams on here. I attached them with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, it's standard as written in the pattern and it, the the back piece between the two seams was something like four inches too big for this size pattern piece. 
So I unpicked where I attached the facing, the front facings to these, and I re-sewed it with a two eighths of an inch seam allowance. And it was still far too short. This distance from here to here was still far too short to match the back piece. So I, I genuinely don't know where I went wrong. I've cut the correct size. I did do French seams and the pattern just says normal seams. But a French seam still ends up using five eighths of an inch. Um, you sew the pieces um, wrong sides together at three eighths and then you sew them right sides together at two eighths. Three plus two is five, five eighths. So I don't think that will have made a difference. So I genuinely don't know where I've gone wrong. And it's very frustrating because I have none of this fabric left. I ordered, I think the pattern calls for two yards or two meters. Um, and the big four pattern companies always tell you to order much more fabric than you need. So I thought, no, I'll go for one and a half meters, which I did. And then I had the most frustrating game of pattern piece Tetris. <laughs> I had the fabric laid out on my carpet because this is quite slippery fabric. Um, and I was playing Tetris to get all of the pieces, just managed to sneak them out. So I've got no more fabric to recut this. And I don't know why this is shorter than it should be. I've cut it out the right way. I don't think the French seams make a difference. So I'm a bit stuck. So I've let this piece out as much as I can. And the only other thing that I can think of to do, if I turn Demel's around, All right, all right, bear with. You can see here, I've pinned the back facing on. Just wondering if I can take out the pin. So I've actually folded this, and there's a fold in the fabric here to just get an idea of how much extra fabric I have. And that, that distance is how much extra fabric I have. I've still got about two and a half inches more fabric than I need. Um, you can see there, <laughs> all of that extra fabric needs to be pinched out. So I think what I'm going to do, given that I've got too much fabric up here, but it fits perfectly at the bottom, I think I'm going to pinch out and readjust my centre back seam. So I'll take it in by about two inches at the top and taper it away to the current seam by about here and then it should fit top and bottom. But honest to God, I genuinely have no idea whatsoever what I did. I think it's salvageable, but it really is just a bit frustrating to not understand. If you've made an error, that's fine if you can learn from it, but I can't learn from this because I don't know what went wrong. Anyway, I'll sort it out and I will let you know next week what I've managed to do. But um, apart from that, it went together wonderfully well. So we'll see. I was trying to do this last night and I was also trying to keep an eye on the news as the election results were coming in and um, Dave had to dash down to see his dad this week for various reasons. So I was a bit stressed and a bit strung out. So I was expecting to find that I just cut the wrong size piece, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Anyway, never mind. I will, I will make it work because I am not being defeated by fabric. I'm just not. Um, yeah. If anyone has any ideas, I mean, do let me know because I've got nothing. Needles, my knitting bit. And I have a finished object to show you. I've done a quick switcheroo with Demelza. And um, this is the Vitamin D cardigan by Heidi Kermeyer. And I was knitting it as my entry for the Three Amigas Knit Along. 
I don't think I managed to post a single photograph in any of the groups, so I, <laughs> I apologise for that. Um, I did manage to get it finished in time. It was pretty touch and go as to whether it was going to be um, dry. Because of the, the massive swing fronts that the pattern's got, trying to, to flat block this was, you ended up with sort of three layers of knitted fabric on top of each other. But I managed to get it finished. I knit it in Sublime Extra Fine Merino DK. Can't remember the colourway, but I'll put it in the drop down box below. I don't think I made any modifications to the pattern. Um, I knit it exactly as it was. The pattern was very clear, very, very clearly written. I am 90% happy with it. The sleeve length is fine, the body length is fine. I love the colour and I love the yarn. My only slight disappointment is it doesn't quite seem to have as much drape as I would like. You know, I have got a bit of a ripple effect, but that's because I've arranged it nicely on the mannequin. I tend to find I end up with this, so it looks like I have lapels, like I'm wearing a dinner jacket. Um, and as I said, I dried it flat and I didn't stretch it out. Maybe I should have done, maybe I should have given it a really hard block and pinned it out. But the fabric is slightly denser than I would have liked. I used the recommended needle size, which I think was 3.5. But for a DK weight yarn, I would have normally used a 3.75 or a 4mm needle. But I was knitting this from Stash and I only had 12 balls of the yarn. And I used 11 balls and maybe a third of the 12. So if I had gone up a needle size, I really would have been playing yarn chicken to try and get the finished object out. Anyway, so I blocked it, which certainly helped. Um, and it did seem a bit stiff when I put it on. Um, but when it was fully dry, I put it under Melzer and actually just under its own weight, that has helped the drape of the cardigan significantly. And um, one of the nice ladies on my monthly thread suggested blasting it with steam. So I may well give that a go as well. But it's, it's the perfect spring and summer cardigan with the nice open front and the sleeves are three quarter sleeves and I've worn it several times, three or four times since and it's it's really lovely. So vitamin D by Herdy, Heidi Kermeyer, put my teeth in. And yeah, overall, I'm very pleased with that indeed. If I were to make it again, I'd go up a needle size and I might even find some yarn that's got some alpaca in it just for that extra little bit of drape. Um, on to whips. I do have one work in progress that I haven't shown you for months because I haven't worked on it for months. I keep it in one of my most favourite project bags and this is made by Emma of Eldama Crafts. Hi Emma! Um, and it's one of the, well, it's one of my few super nice um, project bags. Quite a few of my project bags I've made myself out of old scraps of fabric, but this really is lovely. It's got bees and dragonflies on, and the inside is this lovely check fabric, and there is Emma's label. She's on Etsy, by the way, if you want to find her shop. Now, what I keep in here is my sock blanket whip. A load of people are making mitered square scrappy sock yarn blankets. Um, and much as I like them, I wanted something a little bit different to usual. And then I saw that um, Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears podcast had a sort of a, a recipe more than a pattern, I'd say, for a mitered square blanket that was just a little bit different. Um, she's on Ravelry as Bryony Bears, if you want to go and have a look at her project page to find the details out. It is also on my project pages, if you want to check. Um, and basically, this is what you knit. You knit nine mitered squares. Um, I do mine over 31 stitches. And then, as you can see, you have a centre double decrease that produces that sort of spine down the edge. Um, and once you've knit nine, you put a border around the edge and then you have a square. And Brian, uh, Bryony, uh, Kay, 
She's done various themed blankets and cushions using this technique. She's doing a Disney Films one at the moment, and I think she's done um, months of the year, because it's called the blanket of the year, so 12 blocks, one for every month. Um, and I'm doing mine a little differently in that each of my squares are by a particular indie dyer. So, if I show you, these I finished a while ago. I haven't done all of these recently. I have got six squares um, and all of these yarns are by Moffy and the Squid. She has a shop on Etsy, which I'll link. And I bought these last summer when we went to Yarningham. It was my treat. So all of them are semi-solids, apart from this centre one, which was sort of a, a rainbow. And some of this purple, blue, green, grey. And some have the orange and grey. So I've got six of those. Um, I also last year at Yarningham treated myself to a pack of minis from Jo Knit Sew. She's also on Instagram. And these are the ones I knitted up from there. These aren't quite pastels, but they're certainly a lighter a lighter colour than Mothy and the Squid. And these are also slightly sparkly. Um, and all of these squares I've edged in undyed Owl About Yarn Sparkle Owl Sock. And it's just four rows of garter and then binding off on the right side. So I had previously knitted up five. So there's, I've got five Joan It Sews and I finished off my sixth. So I've got 12 so far, which I thought was pretty good. And then um, I was contacted months and months ago by the very lovely Kelly. Hello Kelly, who is Kelly Lay 1512 on Instagram. Um, and she wanted to do a mini skein swap and I was definitely up for that. Um, so she very kindly sent me some lovely minis, all of which were by Little French Meadow. Um, and I should have enough to get two blocks. So this is my Little French Meadow square and I absolutely love it. Again, it's very different to Mothy and the Squid. And... There's the Joan It So. I don't know if I'll be able to hold these up so you can all see. So, when I get a whole blanket of different ones, it's going to be fantastic. Anyway, so yes, these are my little French meadows. Um, I've never knit with her yarn before and it's absolutely beautiful. I've really enjoyed it. So I've finished one and here I am, three squares through the next one. So you start by knitting two mitered squares singly, so knit one, knit one separately, and then you pick up stitches down here and along there and knit the next square, and then you twizzle it round, and you can either knit this middle one again by picking up stitches, or I tend to knit the block that's going to go there. So I cast on 15 stitches, and then I pick 15 stitches up along here, and then on the wrong, the first wrong side row, you pick up one extra stitch in between using the running yarn. So, I don't remember which way around I did this. Yeah, so I'm doing the bottom, I'm doing the bottom section there. So I will quickly show you the yarns she sent me. She had an ingenious way of packaging them. I was rolling all of mine up and um, it really wasn't the best method because you have to untangle them when you get there. So this, I've only got a fraction left over, but this one here, this is called Room of Requirement. So it's a Harry Potter reference. And then there was Ants Stealing the Picnic, which is a lovely tonal grey. Summer Pudding, that came out beautifully. We've got Alohomora, which is one of the spells from Harry Potter. Beautiful autumn colours on that one. This is Purple Rain. Oh, Prince colourway. Melissa, do you like that one? It is pretty. This, I think, is my favourite. This is Bertie Bott's Every Flavour Beans. Another Harry Potter. And then last, but by no means least, this really rich ready orange which is Forks the Phoenix. Um, so absolutely beautiful yarn and I haven't knitted with it before. Little French Meadow I think is on Etsy as well. 
And also Kelly has since started her own indie dyeing company. And I want to get this right. It is Lakeside Yarn on Etsy as well. So do go and have a look. But the ingenious thing was rather than making little tiny skeins or wrapping them up into balls, Kelly wrapped them around a bit of card and put a slot in the top for the tail end of the yarn. So once you're ready to start working from them, you just pick them up and start knitting. And when you've finished, tuck it back in the slot and it keeps it all nice and tidy. So I've got enough yarn to finish this square. Um, and then I can dive into my other bag of scraps and pick a new indie dyer to start working with. Um, I'm, oh, I missed one. I forgot one. There we are. Oh, I forgot Dobby's socks. <laughs> Isn't that gorgeous? It's kind of greens and sort of mucky purples. Really lovely. So, yes. Little French Meadow. Huge thanks to um, Kelly for sending me those. Did I show you that one? April Showers. That's a lovely one as well. So I knit the mitered squares on 2.25 millimetres. I use DPNs just because they're handily short, but straights would be fine. Um, and then I have a 2.5 millimetre fixed circular that I use to pick up and knit the edges. Now there are, if you don't like weaving in ends, this is not the project for you because each square, it's like a jellyfish, each square generates two ends and every edge generates another two ends. Now I quite like weaving in ends. I find it pleasingly meditative. Um, maybe there's a super fancy way of knitting them in as you go, but I don't know what that is. So yes, I really enjoyed getting that out again. I haven't worked on it for quite a few months. Um, and it's just such, it's all in garter stitch, apart from the centre double decrease, which you purl on the wrong side. It's all in nice squidgy garter stitch. And it's a soothing knit, and you don't have to think about it, and it fits beautifully into your handbag. So I've really been enjoying that. I think a lot of knitters in the UK recently have been doing comfort knitting. So um, I've been joining in with that. Next up, I have some very not exciting progress to show you on my Cullum tea. This is Cullum. This is a pattern by Isabel Kramer. <laughs> and it's just a linen t-shirt knit from the top down. And I think when I showed you last week, I had just joined the shoulders together. I am knitting it in Midwinter Yarns Lithuanian Linen. Um, in the colourway avocado. It's a heavy lace weight, light fingering yarn. Um, I'm really enjoying knitting with it. There's no give in it, but it doesn't bother my hands. Um, and it's fairly loosely plied, so I do have to be careful that I don't split the yarn as I go. Um, but it's, really, it's a really lovely colour and I, I am enjoying working with it very much. I don't know if you remember, but I was having tension issues because of the weight of the yarn. I was seriously off gauge. And that combined with my um, limited choice of needle tips, I seem to have lost my threes, my fixed circular in a three millimeter. And neither could I find my 3.25 millimeter tips either. So I'm knitting this on a 3.5. Uh, let me hold it up. Oh, it's going to blend into my wall. So you knit two shoulder pieces with short rows first, and then you join them together. And this is the back, the back yoke. So um, I'm not far off finishing the yoke, actually. You knit the yoke all the way down through the armhole shaping. So I've been doing decrease rounds. You really can't see it in front of my wall. And there's just a little bit of rib on this edge here that stops it from curling too much. So it's not terribly exciting to look at, but I am very much enjoying doing it. Um, and that's about it really. I'd like to get a crack on um, because I'd like to be able to wear this to Yarningham, which is, I can never remember the date. It's the middle of July anyway. 
and I wanted a nice cool linen t-shirt and to sew myself a pair of shorts and we shall see how that happens. Um, but yes, lots of you were interested in seeing how I feel about working with the yarn and I do very much enjoy knitting with it um, and I know it will soften up a lot the more I wash it. But it's definitely got the drape um, that you'd want for a nice t-shirt and I'm just praying that the size comes out right. I keep forgetting that this distance does also include the sleeve. Um, it's a sort of a continuous thing. So yeah, that's a short sleeve. There's there's my shoulder. So yeah, it's a cap sleeve length. And um, in terms of the tension, um, it does vary a little bit. If I hold it up a bit closer so you can see, it is quite see-through. I'm going to have to wear a vest underneath in true British style. Um, and again, it will even out. But I like it. I like the slightly rustic feel and the slightly rustic look to it. So I'm plugging away on that. Um, I've got a few more rows to do um, and then you cut the yarn and knit the front yoke front you know yes yoke the front yoke bit which has got the lace and then you join it together at the underarms and then it's round and round all the way down to the bottom so I've got three skeins of this in total and I'm probably halfway through my first skein so plenty of yarn um, and then I cast on a new project I um, have recently become chair of governors of my local primary school and there was a big conference held by the local authority in Cardiff um, and I was going to be traveling into that on the train and I didn't have any travel socks which is you know an abomination unto Nuggam so I dug out my trusty travel bag. This, I love this bag. I've had it donkey's years. It's one of the very first ever project bags ever that I treated myself to when I very first started knitting. And it's by a company that no longer exists. It's by the Bothered Owl, but I just love the mushroomy fabric and it's a beautiful size. Anyway, so I dug out, oh, I'm all attached. Hang on a second. I dug out my skein of West Yorkshire Spinners. This is the self-striping that I treated myself to from Wonderwool. And this is Christmas Socks for Dave. I have got the label. It's Colourway 831, which is Blue Lagoon. There we are, look. West Yorkshire Spinners 4-ply. Um, 75% wool, 25% nylon, 400 metres or 437 yards in a 100 gram ball. And it's 35% blue faced Leicester. So yeah, my balls got a bit squished. There was much knitting on the train, which really freaked out all of the muggles, which is always good fun. And I just wanted a plain vanilla sock. So that's what I did. So this is my own recipe. It's not even a pattern. It's just 80 stitches, 2.25 millimeter needles. And I did, oh, I did two by two rib this time, just for funsies. I love the stripes. You can just see there is two different color blues here, as well as this nice aqua mint color. I'm knitting these on my 2.25 mil Addy Sock Rockets. Now, if you remember, I was asking about tips for trying to avoid ladders knitting on DPNs because that really is my preferred choice and I still can't do it. If I show you, can you see that ladder there? I was knitting, I was knitting this bit on the train on the way home from the conference and I didn't have my, um, my cable needles with me. I only had my DPNs, but I'm sure that'll pretty much block out. Anyway, so I've knit the leg, I've done a seven inch leg, and I've just started this tiny bit of the heel flap. And this lovely Progress Keeper, which is knitting needles and jumper, was from Atomic Knitting. Can't remember how I ended up with that. So yes, I'm really enjoying knitting these. Um, it's that just one more stripe, isn't it? Which is, you can't put it down. Um, so I've had a couple of late nights knitting on these. And the temptation to stop knitting everything else and just knit these socks is almost overwhelming. 
but these are travel socks. So I'm only allowed to knit these when I'm traveling or maybe when I'm really pooped. But then you see my mitered square blanket is peasy as well. So that could be an evening relaxing knit and I should save this for the train. That's all of my whips. I do have one acquisition. I meant to show you this last week and I don't quite know what happened, but I completely forgot. Um, as you know, I went to Wonderwall with Jenny and I helped her out on her Owl About Yarn stand. And she was very sneaky and she wandered off for a little look around the show. And she bought the most beautiful braid of fibre from Hilltop Cloud that I've ever seen in my life. And as a thank you for helping her out, she spun me yarn. And oh my God, it's the most beautiful gold sparkly N-plied yarn I've ever seen in my life. I haven't um, quite measured it up. I'm not entirely sure how much I've got, but it's four ply to sport weight. So I've probably got 350 meters ish maybe um so yes yeah, she bought this from hilltop cloud there's the little hilltop cloud logo um and she, um i think it's katie from hilltop cloud and she has a website as well and this was the lamus fiber which is a little bit of everything actually it's 25 percent bfl 12.5 percent soya silk 45 percent merino 12.5 percent shetland and five percent angelina which is obviously the sparkle look at that and honestly if you could spin it's so much cheaper so it was nine pounds for 100 grams of this fiber and i ended up with this absolutely stunning skein i don't know what it's going to be maybe it should be a beard i have got a lovely skein of purple that jenny spun for me last year as a thank you so maybe i should put this together and i could do some color work and make some kind of cow i'll have to think I think really this needs to mature in my stash for a little bit, but look, how lucky am I? So a huge thank you to Jenny. My last section this week is my twos company section. Um, and I just point out to you either new podcasters that I found or new audio podcasts or any particularly interesting episodes of things that I've heard. Um, the idea is that I can help you find some new and interesting podcasters to listen to or just to help you cherry pick some particularly exciting things. So, um, first of all, I know I've mentioned the Fruity Knitting podcast to you before. That's Andrew and Andrea, who podcast from Germany, although they are in fact Australian. And if you've got a spare half an hour, 40 minutes, you absolutely must go and find episode 29. Um, and in amongst their various sections, they always have an interview. And in episode 29, they did the most wonderful interview with Tom Dennis, who is the chap in charge of the Tandy Homestead in Australia. Now he is the fifth generation of his family to sheep farm on this particular plot of land. They've been there something like 140 years. And his great, 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 possibly a fifth great grandfather, is the original sheep farmer that bred the very first Polworth sheep. So he had the idea of mixing various breeds together that ended up with the Polworth sheep. And so his descendants have continued to raise Polworth sheep on that same plot of land ever since. So Andrea chats with Tom um, about the history of the estate, the history of the Polworth sheep, there's some wonderful photographs, um, family photographs. They talk you through how they survived the depression, two world wars, um, terrible bushfires, all sorts of things like that. And also goes into quite a bit of detail about the qualities of Polworth fiber and yarn itself. So the whole of Fruity Knitting podcast is definitely worth watching, but particularly episode 29 and find that interview with Tom Dennis. Um, the I've got two sewing ones I wanted to recommend. Um, I'm sure you've all heard of Lisa Comfort who runs the Sew Over It shops and website. And she also has her own YouTube channel. Um, and she's recently done, that was Dave's hand. <laughs> He's just back from the gym. Um, she's 
currently on maternity leave and she had pre-recorded some um, YouTube videos when she was away and they've been releasing them every week or so. Um, and one of her most recent ones was about a 45 minute video on how she set up Sew Over It and it was fascinating. Um, she's clearly very smart, very capable and successful and she takes you right back to the very beginning of how she was a peripatetic French teacher and sewing teacher and how she's gone from that, teaching sewing classes in her front room, all the way up to two bricks and mortar stores and what's basically a fashion house. Um, so that's fascinating to, to watch, even if you're not a, a sewist yourself, um, it's really interesting to hear the ins and outs. Um, she's a lovely person and I'm self-employed as well. So it was very interesting to me to just see the peaks and troughs of the business she's gone through over the years. So that's well worth a look. Um, I've also mentioned Helen of Stitch My Style before and she's recently been doing a series of blogs where she recreates a particularly iconic dress from films and television programmes. She's done the Marilyn Monroe dress, um, I think I recommended that to you before, but her most recent one has been recreating Julia Roberts' red opera dress from Pretty Woman. I'm sure you know the one, it's got a beautiful sweetheart neck, ruching, and she wore it with um, elbow length white opera gloves. So basically, he um, Helen comes up with her own, she drafts her own patterns, and she takes you through the whole process and you get to see the guts, you get to see the boning and the twirls and the errors. Um, and she's a very funny lady indeed. So do go and have a look at the red dress on Stitch My Style. It's in two parts. Um, and also somewhat hilariously, Helen, um, <laughs> she made a, um, a single breasted jacket out of beach towels. Um, apparently her sister is a stand-up comedian and she wanted a jacket made out of towels in honour of Towel Day, which was um, the 25th of May and celebrates the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy novels. So those are two that are well worth watching. She's very funny, she's very good and um, yeah, that's definitely something to, to catch up on if you've got a bit of time. Speaking of time, I am all out of time. I've, Dave's just got back. I've got to go and get my kids from school. I've got to help out at youth club. There's probably some laundry somewhere that needs washing. So thank you very much for spending some time with me today. Um, I hope you enjoyed my makes and my errors. <laughs> um, if you did enjoy it, please do give me a thumbs up um, and click the subscribe button. It's up there. Um, check down below for comments and yarns and patterns and all of that kind of thing and I will see you again in two weeks. Bye!